Installing a Mastercraft door unit is an easy and rewarding project. By following proper preparation and final installation steps closely, you'll be sure to enjoy your Mastercraft door for a lifetime. Before we begin, we'll need to make sure we have all the right tools for the job. If you're missing any of these tools, stop by your local Menard store before starting the installation process. You'll be needing a 48 inch to 72 inch level, a hammer, a tape measure, a screw gun, six two and a half inch wood screws, one package of wood shims, pliers, a wood chisel, a utility knife, a carpenter's pencil, a marker, and two hanger hardware bags. Begin by cleaning the floor area around the door opening. If needed, scrape off mortar or plaster spills. Double check the rough opening dimensions. The rough opening height should be two and a half inches taller. The rough opening width should equal the door slab plus two inches for a door without an astragal and plus two and one fourth inches for a door with an astragal. Check the opening for plumb and square. Make sure to check both walls for plumb, all four corners for square, and make sure the floor is level. Make any necessary corrections prior to installing the door unit. Install one door hanger flush with the top of each hinge. Install three more door hangers on the strike side of the jam, directly across from the location of the hinge side hangers. Flip the door over and install three more door hangers for each jam directly in line with the first six hangers. Using the pliers, bend the six clips on the non-hinged side so that they are parallel with the jams. Draw a plumb line approximately a half inch from the rough opening on the hinge side of the door. Cut the cardboard on the bottom corners of the unit. Remove the bottom bracing board from the door unit. Using two people, set the bottom of the door unit into the opening and tip the top of the unit into place. While looking at the top hinge, center the middle notch on the door hanger directly in line with the plumb line you drew. Once the notch and the plumb line are in alignment, run a single 1 and 5 8 inch screw through the long slot in the hanger and into the stud wall. Repeat this process for the next two hinge locations, making sure to align the same notch from the remaining two clips with the plumb line. Run a screw through each hanger. Check the margins between the doors and across the header of the door unit. The door should have an even margin across the top of the door and roughly a 1 8 inch even margin between the two doors. Using a hammer, tap the six door hangers on the exterior side of the door back to their original position, making them tight against the wall. Screw a 1 and 5 8 inch screw into each of the six door hanger locations. Place the shims directly behind each of the six hinge locations and add an additional three across the head of the door unit. Make sure to place the shims flat to prevent twists on the jam. If this step is not performed, the door slab may sag in the opening over time. Remove one hinge screw from each of the hinges. Replace the screws using a two and a half inch construction screw for each hinge. The screw should pass through the hinge shims and into the rough opening stud. Use a hammer to remove all excess shim material and recheck margins. If your door has an astragal, you'll want to follow these next steps. Open the inactive door with the astragal and raise the head pin about a quarter inch. Using a black permanent marker, color the top of the head pin. While the mark is still wet, lower the head pin and close the door tightly. Raise the pin until it touches the head jam. This should leave a black circle on the head jam. Use a punch to mark the center of the head pin and then drill a 5 and 16 inch hole. Next place a strike plate so that the center hole in the plate is directly over the hole drilled. Screw the strike plate into place and use a utility knife to score around the edge of the plate. Remove the plate and use a small wood chisel to remove any undesired wood. Once the strike plate has been properly mortised, screw the strike plate back into place. All Mastercraft doors are set up with a 2 and 1 8 inch bore hole set at either a 2 and 3 8 inch or 2 and 3 4 inch back set, depending on the door type. Some edge prep cross bores are set for a 1 inch drive point latch or optional edge prep. To install the back set as a drive point system, simply follow the lock manufacturer's instructions for converting to a drive point. Hammer the drive pin into place, making sure the angled portion of the back set faces the jam. The edge prep option on your interior door will come with a pre-routed pocket for the cross bore. The edge prep is bored one inch wide by two and one fourth inches high and one eighth inch deep to fit most factory supplied lock sets with no adjustment needed. Using the manufacturer's instructions, install the lock set. Install the strike plate on the jam. Our jams are mortised for a 1 4th inch radius strike plate. Apply desired casing to the unit. The wall coverings department at Menards carries quality products needed to finish your new interior door. Make sure to sand your door and then wipe off before finishing. It's very important that the first coat you apply is an oil-based product. Water-based stain, polyurethane, or conditioners are not recommended. Apply a minimum of two coats of sealer to all six sides of the door. 
If you need additional help or more information, including troubleshooting and videos, please visit MidwestManufacturing.com.